It doesn't matter if you're left, right, center, um, you know, British, American, um, Ukrainian, Russian. It, it doesn't matter. We have all been, anyone who has been a part of 20th or 21st century society, we have been programmed from birth and we don't even understand it. How we are all being programmed and manipulated into a narrative and they control all sides of those narratives. I am a a ripple, a wavelet on the entire ocean. And how could I have ever thought that I was separate from this entire ocean? Mm. I am, how can the wave be separate from the sea? How can the ripple be not part of the water? The wave is the water. The wave is the ocean. And I just had this whole comprehension and I just had this resounding voice throughout all of consciousness, just realizing what I am. And as I realized what I am, everything changed. Turn off the news, turn off the media, quit programming that in. Those are the two things I always tell people. Stop watching TV, stop reading the newspapers, and stop drinking fluoride. Yeah, Those two things will do a, a, a large amount. Decalcify that pineal gland and your third eye, you'll begin to perceive. You'll begin to perceive things, perceive truth, instead of just being programmed as a you know the, the ridiculous monkeys we all are right now. Meditation, that's my big thing. And, and I was a uh, I've been a meditator for, for quite a long time. And so I think one of the reasons I had the profound experiences I had in ceremony is that you can't make any of these things happen, but you can plow the earth. You know, I, I, I can, you can't make the seed grow. You can't make the broccoli grow. Um, but what you can do is you can plow the area that you're planting. You can make sure the soil is good. You can make sure the water is there and you can create the circumstances that allow that, potentiality that is in that seed to reach its full potential. And so all these, these awakening moments, you can't command them. You can't make them happen. That's one of the big things that you learn, but what you, you can do is you can prepare the battlefield, mm. you know, and meditative practices and going inside, um, you know, getting rid of fluoride, plugging, unplugging the main, mainstream media, all the things that you're talking about, all of those things, prepare that, so that the actuality, the potentiality, um, karmic propensity, and the potentialities are all lining up. You can create an environment where that potentiality has a larger chance of blooming. So we're in, we're in, I'm fully convinced we're in World War III. It is a fifth generational war. It's a war of narratives with no state actors that are um that are out there. There's actually a great book by my friend Boone Cutler. Um, and and um, General Michael Flynn called 5GW, A Citizen's Guide to Fifth Generational Warfare, which is all narrative um, and it's all psyops. And the interesting thing that you start thinking about is that all the things that we've been manipulated into have been psyops, all the history and stuff that we believe, psyops to serve these people. But then how do you fight a psyop? You fight a psyop with another psyop. So everything is a psyop right now. Everything is a psychological. We're in World War Three. It's a psychological world war. And it's a battle for the narrative and more and more people. And, and there's been a lot of psyops within this battle or this war that have been waking people up and pointing people in the right direction. Some online personalities pointing people in the right direction to start researching things and looking into things and realizing things. And then some of these people have done some interesting documentaries and some of it's been BS and some of it's had really good nuggets of truth in it. And it's been fantastic because back in the day when I first started kind of really being aware of Bilderberg and the Illuminati and all these groups that are controlling things behind the scenes, the internet wasn't around yet. And so the amount of information you could get was minimal at best. It was so easy to control that. But now that people can go and research these things and start seeing, you know, it's like having two or three pieces of the puzzle. And maybe you could see that the puzzle had dogs in it. Maybe you could figure that out from two or three pieces. But that's all you could figure out. Now it's like the whole puzzle is turned face up. It's not put together yet, but it's all on the table in front of you. And you can kind of figure out what's going on just by seeing all those pieces turned up. You don't have to put them all together to make the one complete puzzle, but you get an idea of what's happening. And then you can ask other people and other people will tell you what their idea is. And pretty soon, collectively, we have a pretty good idea of the truth. And this is the worst thing that can happen to these, I call them the deep state players that are controlling everything the ones that have infiltrated everything. And I'm sure you're familiar, a good starting place for people to kind of understand what's going on without going too deep down the rabbit hole is Yuri Bezmenov. You know, watch Yuri Bezmenov's um, interviews back in, uh, I think it was 1980 or 81, 
where he talked about um, the real Marxists, which are not who you think they are. The real uh, communists are not the communists that you see. They're the ones controlling um, that and, and making things happen. And the way that they have infiltrated and the plan that they have to take down Western society, well, all society, to bring it into a dystopian 1984 New World Order, um, it's becoming very, very clear. So I think people, I hope I didn't go too far down the rabbit hole there, but I think people are starting to wake up and all it takes is, is one thing. Those who would tow the Soviet foreign policy, they would be promoted to the positions of power through media and public opinion manipulation. Those who refuse the Soviet influence in their own country would be character assassinated. You know, all it takes is one thing. The news, all the media, it's all nothing but lies. And so it's very easy to see through. And if you see one, then you start thinking and you start, well, what else are they, gonna lie, like, are they lying to me about? And then you start seeing two and you start seeing three. And pretty soon the puzzle starts coming together. And pretty soon, yeah, I got a, pretty soon you're awake and you understand what's going on. Protecting kids from sexual content. Now, why is that? It's controversial now. That's blows my mind that we've come so far that we as a society, we're like, no, that's anti-trans or anti-LGBT too. How, do the, how does that have anything to do with keeping sexual content away from children? your children, keeping pedophiles away from children. Mm. How is this controversial? But we're in a place now where they have such control over the media and over the narrative that if you want to keep pornography away from children, now you're some sort of Luddite, Philistine, anti-phobic, whatever they want to call you, but they just call you names and try to cancel you. And you'll only ever understand these things that we're talking about from a higher a higher vibration from from uh, understanding it in in terms of a spiritual battle and what is the spiritual what what are the spiritual values here and what are the spiritual things that are trying to what are they trying to do in a through through see it through the spiritual lens I boo boo but that's mm -hmm. the only way you're going to be able to understand it because that's what that's what it is it is a spiritual battle and that whole thing is is a big aspect of it and there's there's a lot of stuff starting to come out um, that are going to blow people's minds and it's going to be very, very difficult for a lot of people. It's awakening to what the actual situation is in the world. You know, the the, the narrative, the the programming that we've all experienced and who's running these things and, you know, the last three years and all that stuff. That's one half of the awakening. But the other half that's happening right now is awakening to who we really are. No one wants to cry. No one wants to open. You know how it. You know how it is. More combat-oriented seals and green berets, and, and um, special operations type forces. People say, "Chris, thank you for your service." I'm like, dude, you don't know about my service.